In this video, we are talking about diverticular disease and cancer. So diverticular disease is something that affects a significant portion of the population. Studies indicate that by around the age of 60, about 50% of people will have diverticulate in their colon. So this actually underscores the importance of understanding the condition and taking steps to manage it effectively and to prevent complications. Bowel cancer also is one of the most common and yet preventable forms of cancer. So with early detection through screenings and like colonoscopies and lifestyle modifications, such as maintaining a healthy diet, regular exercise, many cases of bowel cancer can be detected early or even be prevented altogether, which saves lives and reduces the impact of this disease. If you're new here, I'm a family medicine doctor, and on this channel we talk about lifestyle and medicine. So if that kind of stuff interests you, please like and subscribe for more. So let's delve into this topic even more, diverticular disease and cancer. What is diverticular disease? Well, it is diverticulosis. So it is when small pouches known as diverticula form in the lining of the digestive system, typically in the colon. These pouches, they're not cancerous themselves, but they can result in complications such as diverticulitis. So th this is when these pouches become irritated and they become inflamed. So this is diverticular disease or diverticulosis and diverticulitis. So these pouches, they don't cause cancer. What is cancer? So it is a term used to describe a group of diseases characterized by abnormal growth and spread of cells in the body. So that's what cancer is. Normally, cells grow, divide, and die in a controlled manner. However, in cancer, this orderly process, it goes a little bit crazy. So it leads to the formation of tumors or the invasion of nearby tissues and organs. Cancer can develop anywhere really so you can develop in any part of the body and that's what makes it so difficult to contain and control but the overarching theme about it is that it starts to spread wildly and then it leads to formation of an abundance of these cells just like the definition says right there an abundance of these cells and it spreads to the rest of the body and it's an abnormal growth now it can affect anything so the exact cause of cancer is difficult to determine. It's often complex and can be a combination of genetics, environmental, and lifestyle factors. But the overarching theme is that it can affect any part of the body. So the lungs, the breast, breast cancer is a hot topic, um, the brain even, liver, stomach, and colon, of course, which is the topic of today's discussion. So does this diverticular disease or diverticulitis cause cancer? So before we dive into that, we have to talk about the complications of diverticular disease. So one of them we mentioned already, so it is diverticulitis. The pouches become inflamed. Other complications include abscess formation, peritonitis, infections, fistula. We made a whole video, so we won't delve into the specifics of these complications. You can check that out in our other video. But the theme of these complications here is that there is a chronic inflammation going on. So that's the key word here, chronic and inflammation. So this chronic inflammation leads to the issues because of all those little cells we mentioned earlier that are being put under stress. So these cells then recycle and recycle and our bodies, they're not perfect when it's happening in a chronic fashion. So chronic inflammation, there's bound to be kinks. These kinks we call mutations in cells. And sometimes this grows wrong in the process of this recycling and bam, we have explosive growth, abnormal growth. And if you remember our cancer description, an abnormal growth, uh, that goes and spreads. So what's the connection here with cancer and diverticular disease? So diverticular disease doesn't cause cancer directly, but what diverticular disease does is it causes chronic inflammation, chronic inflammation through those complications, and then this potentially elevates the risk of developing colorectal cancer over time. So that's the important thing here. It's not a direct one-to-one -one cause, but it's chronic inflammation. That's the main factor here and the main troublemaker. So then the question is, what can you do about this if you have diverticular disease or if you don't? So the first thing is raising the awareness. So that's very important. Colorectal cancer is, like I said, something that can be caught early, can be prevented entirely uh, through proper means and so on. But the main thing is screening. So here in the UK, we have certain screening protocols where you get a 
a stool test to do in the male at a certain age. So that's a method of screening. It detects blood under the microscope. So it's a fit test called a stool test. You can also do a colonoscopy. So that's something that you can go through your healthcare providers and so on and check out if you have any polyps or abnormal growth. Then the other thing is maintaining a healthy lifestyle. So what are the pillars of a healthy lifestyle? Diet, exercise, stress, sleep, and relationships. This is absolutely critical. So we're not going to dive into the specifics of each one of these, but focus on consuming a balanced diet, rich in fiber, staying hydrated, engaging in regular exercise. So these things go a long way. They can help prevent complications associated with diverticular disease, and they reduce the risk of getting colorectal cancer. We made many videos on this topic, so please check them out. They're very, very informative, and people seem to really enjoy them. And the overarching theme is that diverticular disease is itself. It doesn't directly cause cancer, but the complications from diverticular disease, such as inflammation and infection and so on, they can potentially lead to an increased risk of developing colorectal cancer. And the other thing is that, especially... It's essential to remember that not everybody with diverticular disease will develop cancer. And on top of that, you have a lot of methods of trying to live a healthier lifestyle, trying to prevent this from happening, especially when we're talking about diverticular disease. So please like and subscribe for more. Um, leave your comment in the section below and we'll see you in the next video.